Okay, so my name is Ziv Mahabari and the topic of my lecture is uh, deep learning, specifically CNN, opening the black box. So let me start with what this lecture is not going to be about. Uh, this is not an introduction to deep learning. I'm not going to present a novel architecture of deep learning and I'm not even going to talk about how to solve problems that related to deep learning. What I will talk about is once you already train your network, how can you understand your model? How can you debug your network? But first, let me introduce Trux. So we are in the business of in-store execution. In this business, retail companies as Pepsi, Cola, Lava, uh, Lavazza, send auditors to the stores in order to collect data that will help them to increase their sales. The data might be um, leading brand availability, share of share, pricing, etc. We in trucks uh, replacing this daily manual operation with an automated one. Uh, the auditors arrive to the store and by using trucks application, take images of the shelf. The images are uploaded to the cloud where they are processed and the company receives the final report within less than 15 minutes. We currently covering more than 30 countries around the world. We visit more than 200,000 stores per month and we recognize more than 5 million images per month. On the left side of the screen, you can see some of our leading customers. Okay. So this is a first glance to our data. And as you can see, this is uh, not an easy environment for uh, computer vision people. Our major challenge is that we are not doing uh, traditional image recognition. We are doing fine grain recognition. The, the difference is that traditional image recognition is the ability to distinguish between cat, dogs, and chairs. Fine, reg fine grain recognition is the ability to distinguish between different breeds of dogs. For example, here you can see six totally different products of hair color. Of hair color. Yeah two different shampoos, two, two different uh, bottle of Coke, eight totally different uh, Red Bull cans or uh, Lavazza pods packages. It's important that you understand none, that none of the images in these slides are from the same product. Additional challenges that we have are crowded scenes. We have a huge number of classes. Uh, 15,000 comparing to 2 or 3,000 in ImageNet, for example. And we have a live data. A live data in a sense that product might be added to the market, it might be eliminated from the market, and there might be design change in a product. And yet, when a new product, uh, project arrives, we are delivering a recognition engine within a few weeks under very tight computational budget. So. As per common practice in the industry, we are using deep learning. But we, what we have come to understand is that, is that using deep learning as a black box give, gives you only a limited capabilities. It's like when you are downloading a software from the internet. You can have the free out-of-the-box edition, uh, but if you, go on, if you want to go pro, you have to pay for it. So in deep learning, you must open the black box in order to take it to the next level. So let's say that you want to train a deep learning classifier. So first you have to create your data set. You can choose your favorite deep learning framework. You train your network, you evaluate your, your result, and now there are two options. The first one is that you are happy and you're done. And the second one is that you are not happy. And the question is, what can you do from here? And understanding the model you just received, it's a challenging, uh, it's a challenging task because we are talking about huge neural models with many evolving layers, with hundreds of millions of parameters, and on top of that, the model is inherently nonlinear. And yet, we believe that understanding the model should suggest ways to make it better. So this brings me to the topic of this lecture. So I'm going to survey four different methods for uh, model understanding. The first two are taken from paper that were published by Zeller et al. The third one is a method that we developed internally at Trucks, 
And the third one is more data visualization method, and I will only talk about it briefly. So the first method called DECON, and in this method we try to understand what the neurons see. For each neuron, we try to understand a wet patch from the input image it looked at, and inside this patch, which element contributed the most for the neuron activation. We are doing it by going in the reverse direction. Instead of going from the input image to the neurons, we are going from the neurons uh, to the input image. Uh, we are choosing one neuron, probably the one with the strongest activation, the most dominant one, and we are setting the rest of the neurons to zero, and we are going backward by using the convolution. So let's say an example. So on the left side of the screen, you can see the original image, and since we use the AlexNet architecture, we had to resize the image uh, into a square one, and you can see it on its right. On the right side of the screen, you can see the page that refers to the strongest neuron uh, at layer number one, and on its left, um, the element that contributed the most for the neuron activation. In this case, this is the red color, and this is not surprising, because in the first layers, we are expecting um, to get features like color, simple edges, and things like that. You can also see a, great re a green rectangle on the input image, which gives you indication for the patch location. If it looks deeper in the net, we can see that, for example, at layer number six, the neuron managed to learn more complex structure as the text. So now I'm going to show you how we use this method in order to explore problems in our network. So once again, the original image, and on it right, the input image. And now I'm showing uh, the patch that refers to the three most dominant neurons at layer number two. And on the left, uh, those are the elements that contributed the most for the neuron activation. But if you are looking on the green rectangles on the input image, we can see that, unfortunately, the network learned the padding area. This means that the network learned the insignificant part of the image it's rather than focusing on the unique visual identifiers. This is, of course, might cause a misclassification in many cases, and, an example, and this is a good example where you have an additional object in your image. So my so first reason for misclassification might be pre-processing related problems. It might be re related to your input image aspect ratio, your resize method, your padding method. And next I will show more reasons for misclassifications. So let's say I looked at the nine most dominant neurons. Uh, still have many more neurons uh, left uh, to go, and this is, of course, not feasible. And this is the limitation of this method. Um, so we want a method that will give us, in one image, the indication of what the network found as important, what the network actually learned. So this brings us to the second method, which is called occlusion sensitivity. And in this method, uh, we are using sliding window occlusion. And we are... Oops. Okay. Never mind. We are uh, using a sliding window. We are hiding uh, each different part in the image uh, each time. And we are collecting the recognition confidence uh, that each occluded image received. And we actually, the output of this process is in a heat map that gives an indication for what the network found as important, what the network learned. The core principle behind this method is that if I'm hiding an insignificant area in the image, the recognition confidence will stay high. But if I will hide a significant part of the image, the recognition, recognition confidence will drop. So let's see an example. Uh, this time the original image is a bottle of water. And on its right, you can see the heat map that we received. And in order to make it easier to understand, we merge the heat map with the image. So you can actually see only the part that the network found as important. So in this case, in this example, you can see that the battle cup and the logo are the, uh, the parts that the network found is the most significant. Here is an additional example uh, of a 
orange juice bottle, and you can see that the flower in, this, in the center is the most important part for the network. Now I'm going to show you how we use this method in order to uh, check the robustness of our network for image artifacts. In this case, reflection. So in the original image, you can see that there is a reflection of additional product in, inside our product. And our concern was that uh, this reflection might affect the network performance. Uh, but when we are looking on the heat map or the heat map on the image, you can see that the network uh, managed to ignore this uh, artifact and found only the label as the, as the significant part. But anyway, additional reason for mis misclassification might be the robustness of your network for image artifacts. And yet, we still use deep learning as a black box because we only manipulated the input and checked what, out, what happened to the output and this is how we try to understand the model. But can we increase the resolution? Can we really open this black box? We want the ability to say not what the whole model learned, but what each layer learned. And this is why we came out with a method that we called activation map. In this method, we are building a heat map for each layer separately, and we are doing it by performing some aggregation method, method might be average, maximum, doesn't really matter, along the kernel axis. So for example, each neuron, if I have 96 different kernels at layer number one, each uh, pixel in the heat map of layer number one is actually, for example, the average value of the, of the pixel with, all the nine, with the convolution with all the 96 different kernels. So, in this case, our input image is an energy drink, and you can see that in layer number two, uh, the most important part are on the top of the image. If we're looking on a deeper layers, we can see that uh, in layer number seven, for example, the network found the, the network found the V slogan in the middle of, of this product as the most significant part. So now I'm going to show you how we use this method in order to explore problems in our architecture. So this this time we use the zero padding method for the input image, and we knew that if uh, that in order to recognize this product, the network must learn at least some of the uh, fine details, like uh, the cap, the numbers, the text, something like that. But when we looked along all the layers, we see that the, the, the network didn't manage to learn none of them. So this gave us a strong clue that our uh, stride and pooling size are too aggressive. We also use this uh, method in order to check the robustness of our network for additional image artifact, in this case, saturation. You can see the saturation along the cog battle and along the, in, along the lift battle. And this time you can see that unfortunately, the network didn't manage to ignore uh, those artifacts. So the third reason for misclassification might be, of course, architecture-related problems. So for summary, what we're actually offering is a clash dashboard. It's an additional information that gives you uh, some indication about your model capability to uh, recognize each one of your class. Here you can see a good example uh, where the network managed to learn all the important features of this product. And as I, I promised in the beginning, uh, I will only talk briefly about our data visualization method. Uh, it, this is actually an efficient combination between two very well-known methods for dimension reduction, a PCA and TCNE, that allow us to represent our data in its feature space, which is, for example, it, in AlexNest, is 9,000 uh, features long, and to present it in two-dimensional plotter. Uh, this is in the feature space before the fully connection layers, and this can give us a strong indication about our classifier uh, capability to distinguish between the different uh, classes. Okay, so this is the recognition team, and this is it. <laughs>